Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for attending. We're really, really happy to have you uh, tonight. So we're going to spend one hour together for this bookbinding workshop. So um, just to introduce myself, my name is Anaïs Grato. I work for the library. Um, I'm the preservation coordinator for archives and special collections. And I'm part of the text and context team so if you're not familiar with this space already, so this is a new space that's going to open on the third floor of the Hillman Library. It's not open quite yet. And the idea with this space is that it provides an active environment for the creation, the manipulation, and the disassembly of text. And it's a space that's going to open everyone, to everyone in the PID community, to students, faculty, and staff. So as you may guess, uh, our, our workshops right now are all virtual at the moment. That's why I'm actually uh, in my house right now. Uh, but we really, really hope to be able to welcome you soon in person. So, so what we're going to do tonight is three little notebooks using a technique called Japanese tab binding. This technique actually has different names. For instance, even though I call it Japanese tab binding in Japan, they don't call it Japanese tab binding. It often uh, referred as um, also Chinese book binding, traditional Chinese book binding, stitched binding. So it has various names, um, but it's a technique that was often used in the past in uh, Asian countries like China, Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. So I chose it because I think it's very beginner friendly. It's quite elegant, I think, and very minimal. And um, so I'm going to show you the three techniques we're going to do. So the first one, and they all build from each other. So we're going to start really with the easiest and we're going to end with the most complex, but it's not, it's not really difficult. Um, so this is the first one that we're going to do, like really the basic one um, with just a four hole binding. Then we'll do a noble stitch binding. So you see they are very similar. And the last one is called a hemp leaf binding. So I think when you look at them, it's kind of easy to see they kind of all build from each other. Uh, and just, I don't want to forget to mention it, so I'm going to say it right away. Uh, I guess the only downside to this binding is that it's a little fragile because you have all really like all this thread on the outside of the book. So if you decide to make one, um, what I would recommend is maybe not if you put it like in your backpack or in a purse, for instance, not to just like drop it in the bag as if, but maybe put it, you know, inside, a not, inside another notebook. Uh, my point is just since it's a little fragile, it's not something you want to really carry around absolutely every day uh, at the bottom of a bag. Just a, a quick warning. So, um, okay, so let's start. Again, if you have questions, please uh, write them uh, in the chat. Um, or unmute yourself. So the first thing we need to do is grab some paper. So um, basically you can grab any type uh, of paper you want. Uh, I'm just going to use like regular paper like that you would put in a printer. But technically um, for an optimal result, I think a paper that's a little thicker would be better. Uh, I mentioned no. ah, maybe I don't know if it's a question or if someone who is not muted. Um, for the dimensions, feel free to use basically any dimensions you want. Uh, if you want to have the same format as me, I uh, cut my paper so that it's um, five inches high and six inches wide. Um, I recommend to choose something like on a wide side, because if you look at the binding, the bind binding itself is also already like one full inch. So you don't want your notebook to be too small. Otherwise, you know, you won't have much paper to play with. So go ahead and grab your paper. 
Um, so I'm going to make a small notebook. Um, yes, you will be able to get the recording. Um, I'm just going to put like, I think I, tr I put six sheets of paper. So it's going to be a very thin notebook. Feel free to put a little more if you want, 10, 12. I wouldn't go too thick. Um, and I'm just going to take a second for you to grab, um, to grab your paper. And if you have um, colored paper or ornamental paper and you want to make cover, feel free to grab some as well. So I'm going to use like this green paper to make my covers. Um, again, entirely up to you. What I like when I learn a new technique is maybe not using the most beautiful paper, but using scrap paper. This way, you know, if your binding is not perfect, you're not too sad if you wasted pretty paper. At least that's my take on it. So again, feel free to add a cover, a front cover and a bottom cover. It's entirely up to you. And uh, okay, so let's get, uh, let's get started. I'm going to switch to my document camera. Is the cover the same size? Excellent question, yes. Everything is the same size. So I'm going to switch. Okay. Okay, I will just wait a second to make sure that everyone has this paper ready. Okay, so if you have your text block ready, or if you're almost ready, something else you can grab is just a strip of scrap paper And what's important with this scrap paper is that it needs to be the same height as your text block. And this uh, scrap paper is going to help us to make our guide to know where we can pierce uh, our stations. So if you're ready, I'm going to show you slowly, I promise, how to make that guide. So again, so you have this piece of paper that the same height as your text block, and you should grab a ruler and a pencil. And then you take, okay, I'm going to put my text block away so that it's not confusing. Right now we're just working on the guide. So you take, um, your scrap paper, and you're going to draw a line one inch from the side. And draw a line. Okay, pretty easy so far. Um, I'm showing you this uh, technique. The technique I'm going to show you, I like it because you don't need to measure anything. So once you have drawn your line, you're going to fold your uh, piece of paper three times, height-wise. So the first time, one, and again. two, and a third time. I mean, try to be precise if you can. <laughs> if it's not perfect, it's not a huge deal. It will look slightly handmade, which is, you know, is a good thing. <laughs> so again, once you have folded you guide three times. You can open it. And you see you have, so you have your line that you drew one inch from the side and you have all these folds. And so what you can do is take a pencil and you're going to draw a dot on the line you drew and on the first fold. 
at the intersection. So me, I'm drawing a big dot so that you can see on the camera, but what you draw doesn't have to be that big. Then you skip the next fold and you draw another dot on the third fold. Skip the next fold, draw a dot on the fifth fold. Skip the next fold, draw a dot on the seventh fold. So you have something like this. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to take our guide and uh, position it on our text block. So when I say text block, it's like, it's um, the sheets we're going to use um, for our notebook. Again, if you have ornamental paper or colored paper, you can put one sheet on the top to make the front cover and you can put one sheet at the bottom to create the back cover. So we are going to position our guide like this on the text block and make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And we're going to uh, purse our stations. So how we're going to do this. So first, if you happen to have a paper clip or a binder clip of some sort, feel free to use it. It will help you like keep the paper in place. If you don't have one, it's not important. You just need, you know, to make sure that your paper is perfectly aligned. Um, and yeah, and so to make the holes, so me, I'm going to use an all. So it's a book binding tool that's pointy. Um, if you don't have one, you can just use a thumbtack. It's a little trickier, but that it works just as well. Um, just be careful. Um, I don't want you to damage your table or I don't want you to hurt yourself, which would be way worse. So me, I'm using a cutting mat to protect my table. And actually, since it's kind of uh, crappy, actually, I, I did like an old uh, notepad I don't care about at the bottom. Can you use your sewing machine? So Jasmine, I confess, since I, I don't know how to use a sewing machine myself, I'm not sure if I can recommend it or not. Maybe other people in the chat in the chat can help you. Um, but there are just like four holes to, to pierce. So I think it should be rather easy. So either with an awl or a thumbtack. So if you don't have a cutting mat, um, if you have a cutting board around, you can use it. If you have an old stack of paper you don't care about, you can use it. Also something else that can work if, if you have a sponge, you can just put it underneath and this way you know you're not going to damage your table. Okay, so time um, to make the holes. So you just create your four sewing stations like this by punching holes where you drew your dot. Okay, here we go. So now the tricky part is to always remember to remove the guide before binding the notebook because it can happen to the best of us to actually forget about the guide. Just this, what you just made, don't throw it away. We're going to reuse it for a second notebook. Okay, so I don't know if you can see you have the four holes. So something I like to do before actually started binding, I like taking a needle and making sure that the holes that I just made are wide enough for the needle to go through. This way it saves you a hassle later. Okay, so we have our paper ready, the four stations. So now we just need to grab some thread um, 
and um, scissors and needle if it was not the case already. So just take a second to do this. Um, I'm going to use some bookbinding thread. So uh, if you saw some before, it's um, that thread is a little thicker than regular thread and it's waxed. It makes it a little stiff. It's very nice to use for bookbinding um, because it doesn't uh, get entangled too much. If you just have regular thread, that's perfectly fine. Um, it just later, you know, if you want to, if you discover that bookbinding is your new favorite thing and, and you want to upgrade, it can be something nice to have on hand. So, um, so get some thread and we're going to need about four times the height of um, your book in thread. So just measure roughly. And just so you know, I said four times, but me personally, I always like to add a little just for good measure. And this way it will be easier to tie your knot at the end. So let's say at least four times the height of your book. And maybe if you're like me, you like think, making things a little easy for yourself, a little more than four times. Okay, so now it's time to start binding. So the first thing we're going to do is lifting gently a few pages of our notebook. You know, like if you have six pages, you can leave three pages or the idea that it's roughly in the middle of the textbook. You don't have to count the pages. It's doesn't have to be exact. And what we're going to do is put our needle inside the book and insert the needle up through hole two, like this. And we're pulling the thread, not too fast, because what we want is to keep the tail of the thread inside the book. So uh, I don't think anyone asked, but yeah, there is no need to tie a knot at the end of the thread. What's important is to make sure that the tail, the tail of your thread stays nicely in the book. I would say about two inches is good. This way, it won't be too hard to tie your knot at the end. Um, if you worried about the tail not staying in place, you can put a little bit of tape just here. Um, but if you're careful, it's not really necessary. Okay, so we have, if I make bigger holes, can I use ribbon? Yes, and actually it's a very good idea. Um, also, I'm um, showing you this, you know, with a soft cover, it's just paper because I assume this is what we all have around at home right now. Um, but later, if you have access to more equipment, these notebooks are actually really, really cool with a, um, with a hard cover, but then you need a drill to make the holes. How many pages inside? So the number of pages is really up to you. Me, I only put six pages, but you can put a little more, you know. I would say maybe up to 16 would work. After, maybe it will start being a bit hole, hard punching your holes. Okay, so if we're all at the same step, tail of the thread is inside. The thread is coming out of station number two. So what we're going to do now is we're going around the spine. I guess I should have made this clear. Like this part of the book where the binding is, this is called the spine. So the whole, sorry, the thread is coming out uh, of Station number two, we're going around the spine like this to create this horizontal line. And we're going back inside the same station. So we're basically, we're just 
wrapping the spine, but we are not really moving that much. We just want to create this nice line. And so you pull your thread because you want it kind of tight, but, but watch out, remember, we don't want the tail inside of the book like to be pulled through. So just be mindful of this. So if you're still with me, I'm just checking the questions in the chat at the same time. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to move to hole number one. So we're moving toward the top of the book and the top of the book is actually called the head of the book. We're moving toward the head of the book like this. So moving to hole one. like this. And since we just arrived at this new station, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to wrap our thread around the spine. It's kind of like something easy to remember that every time you arrive at a new station, you wrap around the spine. And you see, you can kind of like already recognize the pattern. So now we hold one, see, like at the um, at the back, and we're going to wrap again, but not around the spine this time, but around the head of the book. So your thread is like popping out um, on the back cover. You wrap around the head like this. And yeah, again, like the big, <laughs> like the trick with this binding to make it elegant is like to try to have your lines uh, straight. So for this, your binding needs to be kind of tight. And this is the tricky part that you want it to be tight because it's pretty and it keeps the text block together. At the same time, if it's too tight, it can um, actually damage your paper. Okay, so here we are. We're on the back of the book station one and it's kind of easy because you're getting used already to like the pattern we're making so I'm from station one we're just moving back down to station two and this way it creates this nice line again this nice vertical line we're back at the front we're in station two, we're moving one down to station three. Oops. Okay. It's a new station. So again, the first thing we do before, before going anywhere else, we wrap our thread around the spine. this at the bottom sorry at the back we move again one down to reach station four station four when we're there we wrap our thread around the spine And then we're going to wrap again around the bottom of the book. The bottom of the book is called the tail. So you wrap like this. Okay.
And now almost there. We're moving from station four at the front to station three. So you see the pattern is completed on the front. Looks kind of nice, if I can say so myself. <laughs> and then you move, you just need to finish the pattern. So you just need to move from station three to station two. And this is maybe the last tricky part because we don't want to pull the needle all the way through to the other side. We want the needle to come out here in the middle of the book where um, the tail of your thread is. And so you pull and if we did a good job, now you have the two pieces of your thread here in the middle. All you have left to do is tie a knot. If you're good with knots, if you know extremely elegant knots, please feel free. This is not my case. So I'm just going to make a double knot. I saw some bindings where the thread is left like this. The idea that if it breaks, this way you still have enough thread maybe to tie another knot. But otherwise, you can just trim it. And it's done. Okay, so I'm just going to wait maybe for a minute so that everyone can finish uh, their notebook. If you have questions, please feel free to write them down in the chat. If you miss something, in a way you're in luck because the next binding we're going to do is extremely similar. So in a way you will see a second time what I just did. For those of you who are ready, so grab um, grab more paper. So it can be as you just, um, if you had a taller book, would you still use just four holes or would you pierce more holes? So I know there are techniques with more than four holes, but also so big books that just have four holes and it's just that the space between each hole is way bigger. Um, yeah, so grab more paper. Again, if you have colored paper, ornamental paper, you can use it to make covers. It's entirely up to you. And this one, I think um, you should find it rather easy because it's really similar to the previous one. Because you see the whole structure is similar, it's just that you have these little patterns at the top and bottom. So for this one, what we're going to do is, so if your paper is still the same height, you can re reuse your guide. If it's not, you will have to, to you know, recreate a guide that's the height of your new paper by again, drawing a line one inch from the side and then marking the four stations. So for this guide, so it's basically exactly the same. That's why you can reuse your previous guide. The only things that different is that we're going to make two new holes. We're going to make a hole at the bottom, sorry, at the top between the first hole and the corner. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm using a ruler. It's really not necessary. You can just, you know, eyeball it. And what we're going to do is create one hole in the middle of this line. And then we're doing the same thing at the bottom. We're connecting the last dot to the corner and then working, we're drawing one dot in the middle. OK. 
Okay, now it's time uh, to punch our holes again. So this time we have six to make. Can remove a guide, our guide. Again, I just like to make sure that the holes I made are wide enough. And now so we're going to get some thread. This time we need more thread. We need six times the height of a book. And remember always a little extra for good measure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Okay, so we start exactly the same way. We lift a few pages from the book. We go through station two. I guess it's not station two anymore, but you, you get because there is that extra. Okay, this extra hole that we made, I'm going to call them like 1A at the top and 4A at the bottom. So one, two, three, four, and one A, four A. Okay, so we're going through station two, like we did for the previous notebook. And we make sure we leave our thread, um, some of our thread inside. Again, about two inches so that you have enough to tie your knot. The first thing we do, we go around the spine and back through the same hole. Make sure it's tight, not too tight. Then we move to station one. So we make our way toward the head of the book. It's a new station. So the first thing we do is go around the spine like this. And then like we did previously, we go around the head of the book. Okay, so, so far everything is exactly the same. What's going to happen now is that we're going to move from uh, our station one to station one A and create a nice diagonal like this. New station, so we go around the spine
And then, so you exit from 1A. And since we're at the um, head of the book, we go around the head. Like this. So you see the pattern is completed at the back. Now we just need to complete it at the front and connect 1A to 1. Yay! Then, we're at the back, we move from 1 to 2. From two, we move to three. New station, we go around the spine. So uh, for the corner, what I'm going to do is that since it's the same pattern at the bottom, um, at the tail of the book, I will explain again. This way you will see maybe what you got wrong uh, with the first one. So just, yeah, just give me a sec. So I'll go around hole three, around the spine. Three to four, you walk your way down. New station, you go around the spine. Okay, so the same way at the top of the book, the first thing we did was go around the head. So here, same thing, we go around the tail like we did for a previous notebook. Okay. And once you're here, maybe that part you got lost when you were at the top, the thing that we need to do is connect 4 to 4A four by creating this little diagonal. Since it's a new station, remember to wrap your thread around the spine. Okay, and then you wrap around the tail. Now we're almost done. So to complete the pattern at the back, I'm connecting 4A to 4. Like this, then four to three at the front. And the last thing left to do again is to connect three to two. But remember, don't pull your needle and your thread all the way through because you want to make sure you can tie your knot in the middle. Double knot, or whatever type of knot you want. And then you just need to trim. So mine is not perfect. I can see the thread is a little twisted. But otherwise, this is what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you a third one. Grab more paper, I'm going to go turn on the light because it gets a little dark in my room. Oops. So the last binding I'm going to show you is this one. 
yes, please give us time to thread the needle, of course. And you know what, since you're mentioning this, I'm going to confess something is that I'm really terrible at threading my needle. So in advance of the workshop, I just threaded everything in advance because I knew I would, I would just be struggling otherwise. So completely sympathize with this issue. So, um, so yeah, take time to thread your needle, grab more paper, grab uh, some uh, colored paper if you want to, to make the, your covers. Um, so we are going to make our guide. Again, so same thing, the guide needs to be the same height as your pages. And this time we're going to draw not one line, but two lines. The first line is half an inch in, the second is one inch in, like on the previous guide. You're just basically adding another line. Okay, so half an inch in, one inch in, and then we fold again three times, exactly like we did before. One, two, and three. Okay, you unfold. Okay, so now I'm going to explain how to make the dots. So first, so okay, so to make it easy, ignore the first line, the line that's like half an inch in, just ignore it for now. Focus on the second line, the line that's one inch in. We're going to mark your four dots like you did it before, like on the first fold, on the third fold, fifth, and seven. So this is like before, the same four holes that we had before. I'm going to number them, but look at how I do it. So this will be hole number two, hole number four, hole number six, hole number eight. So only even numbers. Now I look at the first line. So you see between two and four, of course it will be station three. Between four and six, on the first line you will have station five. Between six and eight, on the first line you will have station seven. We just need to make two more dots dot one, so it will, it's going to be on this first line. It is going to be between the top and the first fold. You can measure if you want, or you can just, you know, eyeball it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then same thing at the bottom. Dot nine will be between the last fold <clears throat> and the um, bottom of the page. So basically all the even numbers are on the second line, the one that's one inch in, and all the odd numbers are on the first line. All the dots are on a fold, except for dot one and dot nine. So now we're just going to position our guide.
and um, punch holes in our stations. So this time we'll have nine holes to make. Okay, so take your time. I'm not going to start binding right away. I'm just removing my guide as usual, going through the holes with my needle. So just so you know, this is the last technique I'm going to show you. I apologize in advance because I think I'm going to go a few minutes over. Um, while you uh, punch your holes, me, what I'm going to do, and you don't need to do it, I'm going to write on my text block so that it's easier for you to follow along. You don't need to do it. Or if you do, you know, you can use a pencil. This is the front, the head, the tail. I'm also writing it down because if you want to watch the video again later and look at the instructions I put together, I numbered the station the same way. So I think it can maybe help you to follow along. This is the back head. So uh, once your stations are made, you can grab your thread and needle. And for this technique, you're going to need extra thread. So you need at least eight times the height of your, of your book. Yes, I can show the guide again, no problem. Just a sec. So this is what the guide looks like. Uh, the first line is half an inch in, the second line is one inch in. Number one and number nine are not on a fold. Remember, they are like number one is between the first fold and the top of the paper. Number nine is between the last fold and the bottom of the paper. Otherwise, all the numbers are on a fold. So uh, just so you know, this is how we're going to begin we are going to lift a few pages from our book. We're going to insert our needle, but not through hole, uh, not through station two this time, through station six. So it's the hole that's on the second line. It's not the last at the bottom, it's the one, it's the third one. I think if you didn't write down the number of your book, what's easy is just to look at your guide if you uh, wrote the numbers on there. And then as you did before, make sure that you leave some thread inside the book, about two inches. Okay, so now what's important is that we don't go around the spine this time, which is very unusual. What we're going to do is that from station six, we move up to station four. Let's 
like this to create a vertical line. Again, remember the thread needs to be tight, but you don't want the tail um, of your thread like to move. So tight, but not too tight. What well, session four? Now we go around the spine. Basically, what we're going to start by uh, doing is very, very similar to everything we did before. To help you, if you're a little lost, what I want you to do right now is completely ignore these three, five, and seven dots. We don't need them right now. Okay. Uh, I started in hole six. Then when you needle exit, you don't go around the spine. I repeat, don't go around the spine. You move from station six to station four. You move up, you create a vertical line. Once you're at four, you go around the spine. Then from four, you move to two. When you are two, I'm sure you can guess what we're going to do. We go around the spine and back through the same hole in two. So much thread. Okay. Now, since we are at the head of the book, we wrap our thread around the head. Then, so remember, it's it's exactly the same little pattern that we created on the previous notebook. We're going to make a diagonal line from two to one. New station. We go around the spine. And since we're at the tail of the, sorry, the head of the book, we go around the head. The pattern is completed on the front. We just need, uh, kind of messed up a little on the back because my thread entangled, but it doesn't matter. From one, you move to two. And then this nice little pattern at the top is over. So now we're walking our way to the um, tail of the book. So from two, we move to four. This kind of what I like about this technique is that maybe like the first couple of times it seems a little tricky, but then you realize it's very intuitive. It's just about filling up the gaps. Four, you move to six. And since it's a new station, we go around the spine. We move down again from six to eight. When we're eight, no surprise, we go around the spine.
okay, since we're at the bottom of the book, I keep calling it the bottom, it's called the tail of the book, but you get what I mean. We are wrapping our thread again around the tail and back again through eight, like this. It's time to create our pattern again at the bottom, eight to nine. So we create this diagonal line like this. We go around the spine. and then around the tail. Our pattern is completed at the back. We just need to do the same thing at the bottom, uh, at the front. So we're connecting nine to eight. And from here, eight to six. And I promise it doesn't look like it, but we are basically almost done. So your thread is coming out of six, which is where we started. From six, we're going to create a diagonal line we're moving from six to five. And since it's a new station, we wrap around the spine. We're making our way through the um, to the head of the book. From five, we move to four. From four, we move to three. New station we wrap around the spine. Okay. And then at the back, we connect three to two. And then we're basically going back to the tail of the book. So from two, move to three. From three to four, again, filling up the gaps. Four to five. five to six, six to seven. And if you notice, we've never been through this station before. So we can go around the spine on number seven. Then at the back, seven to eight. And then it's almost over. From eight, we just need to move to seven.
And if you look at the back, there is just one stitch, one last stitch from seven to six. And remember, it's like in the previous notebook, don't go all the way through. Try to find out where your thread is and always the tricky part, like pull your needle in so that you can meet the end of your thread. And then it's all about tying the knot. Um, and just one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, also you have tons of resources. Um, can I use a candle to wax it? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, also, there are a lot of variations on this technique. So if you go online, there are so many incredible resources for book binding. Um, you can draw animals, uh, different types of patterns using this technique. Hooray, it worked. Awesome, Barbara, I'm so happy. Um, if you, uh, yeah, if you look book binding, for instance, I really recommend tutorials um, by this woman called C. Lemon. Uh, they're very beginner friendly, very fun to look at. She has her YouTube channel and an Instagram. Um, and um, just so you know, we have a lot of uh, exciting workshops online coming up this semester. Just switching, sorry, my video for the end. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of exciting workshops coming up this semester, so presumably all online, but if you're interested into making your own ink, doing paper marbling, different types of writing, um, please join us. Um, and you can always know what workshops we have coming up if you uh, look us up, for instance, on Facebook, Center for Creativity at Pitt, um, or we're also on Instagram and Twitter, Center for Creativity and uh, also on the Center for Creativity website. And you'll see there is a text and context tab on there and all the workshops are uh, related to book art are listed there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think book binding is very fun and especially when we're stuck at home, it doesn't require a lot of supplies. So um, I think in the future it's possible we organize more. Uh, it was very, very nice meeting all of you, even if it's virtually, and I know we all have an incredible Zoom fatigue at the moment, so I really, really appreciate it that you took time tuning in and spending this hour and 20 minutes with me. Okay, well, have a good night, everyone.